Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and today I would like to post to you that there are some big changes in the YouTube's terms and service condition because of the COPA Act. So the main goal will be a surrounding around the COPA, but this is not about just my channel. A lot of your favorite content creators are about to face some troubles. All the people who you love, like streamers who stream the games, or maybe you watch the channel What's Inside in which a dad comes up with his kid and just opens up a lot of things and cut them out. It's so fun. A lot of your vloggers like Logan Paul or maybe Mumbai Karnikil, whose audience is a lot of kids. Now their content is not directed for the kids, neither kids are appearing in their channel, but there, a lot of fan following is from the kids. Not only that, a lot of motivational channel because a lot of kids watch those motivational channel to get things done. Content creator like Sandeep Maheshwari and a lot of programming channel like me and hundreds of others who love to teach programming may all get in trouble because of these new terms and service condition and the COPA. So I tend to dig up more into the COPA Act and thought let's share this with all of you because you have already seen so many videos about COPA saying that hey you just have to click whether your content is for kids or not, whether kids are appearing in your channel or not, but it's actually way more deeper than that. So in this video I will try to demystify what COPA is and how it is going to affect almost every single creator on the platform of YouTube and it might be really dangerous. So all the videos that you have seen so far are mostly directed towards the COPA Act saying your video should be marked as made for kids or not. They have made the videos in a hurry. They haven't studied the COPA in much detail. I have studied it in a detail, but again, I'm no lawyer or I'm not official uh, person to make these terms and condition, but I have understood it enough so that I understand the gravity of the situation can explain more with you. In order to understand more about the COPA, we first need to get a little bit onto the history of that and then I'm going to share you the impact of it and what we actually can do more about it. In order to understand this act, COPA, we first need to understand what are the parties being involved in here. There are four parties being involved in here. First and foremost, the government, or you can also say FTC, Federal Trade Commission, but we're gonna refer them as just government. The second party involved is YouTube itself. The third party that's involved is the kids, and the fourth one is the creator. And you can officially name COPA as the official witch hunt for the creators. So almost a decade ago, FTC came up with a law known as Children's Online Privacy Protection Act means we need to protect our children because they might be vulnerable to a lot of predators which are available online, which might put a lot of abusive comments towards the children or may use their information for wrongdoing. So they said, hey, you cannot collect kids' information without the consent of their parent and that's it, period. YouTube came out and said, cool, we are not collecting any of the kids' data, we are fine. A little later, as we all know, YouTube was not collecting officially the kids' data, but YouTube is serving the personalized ad based on the cookies and the tokens that are being stored in the browser. What you have visited in the past, what you were searching on Amazon, you are always served ads based on that. And there is not just what you are searching. There is a lot of criteria that is being involved in these cookie collection. A lot of data is being squeezed into that. So YouTube was kind of churning out the data from these cookies about the age, your location, and a whole bunch of other things. So basically, yeah, they were not officially allowing the students or the kids to just enter their data, the young kids, but they were actually still uh, consuming all of the data created by them so that they can determine their age and serve ad based on that. So FTC came out and said, hey, YouTube, you are being a sneaky son of a gun. So I'm, not, I'm gonna change and amend my laws as well. The new laws in the 2013 came up and said, now you cannot also collect any kind of persistent data or cookies to figure out this age and factors like that. So this was tricky for the YouTube as well. So in April 2018, a lawsuit was filed up and we have all seen that in the news and almost almost everywhere that YouTube is under the Child's Act and they are trying to being sneaky and all of that. Now resultant of that, a year later, almost a year later, YouTube resolved this case by paying a very heavy duty fine. Now, as a fine, if you take out $170 million from a company, you might think that's a 
epicy change for YouTube, but it's not. It's not a change for YouTube. Everybody just valued the amount that they have paid. 170 million dollar is quite a lot of money, and this was just a settlement for the one case. It might appear later on as well. So in that, it was also mentioned in the lawsuit that per violation, YouTube is going to pay. 42,000 US dollars for the violation of this uh, Scopa Act. Now, in order to avoid future such actions, YouTube came up with a plan which can officially be termed as the witch hunting of the creators. Let me explain you what that is. Now, resultant of this fine, YouTube came up with a system that now we are going to allow the creator to explicitly mention that whether your content is directed towards kid or not. So it looks very clear that now we have two options, either to direct our content for just kids and to direct not for kids. But what about the third condition when you are not able to provide the correct information? Now, I'm not saying you are doing it a very uh, like in the knowing mind, maybe accidentally you are providing a wrong information because the act, this whole terms and condition is very vague. Let's just say you have a content in which no kids is appearing. But the stat says that most of your content is being watched by kids, then that means if you are saying that, hey, my content was not meant for kids, but eventually kids happen to watch them a lot and love it them a lot, then you are providing false data according to the YouTube guidelines. So let me quickly walk you through what happens when you mark your content as directed for kids, not directed for kids, and when you are failed to provide the correct information because YouTube says that you should uh, consult to a lawyer in order to determine each and every single video is meant for kids or not. Consulting to a lawyer for every single video? I don't think I can afford that. And neither any creator on the YouTube can. First and foremost, what happens when you put your content as directed for kids regardless it was there or not? Then you pay a heavy duty fine, not in the terms of money, but in terms of various other features on YouTube. You are not going to get any comments on your channel. It will be disabled. You are not going to get any info card, no end screen, no stories, no commenting, no notification icon for your channel. And you cannot also put your, your videos into watch later list, play lit list and the most important thing is that you cannot serve personalized ad on your channel because it's it's not in the rules anymore. That means your ad revenue is going to go significantly down if you're not able to serve ads there. Means all those channels in which kids were watching those cartoons and stuff like that, that's all almost gone. Okay, so if these are the penalties, I'm never going to mark my content as not for kid. What if I just mark all of my content as for kids? not for kids. Now then things get actually a little bit tricky. Now since you have marked all of your channel as not meant for kids and you're serving them regular stuff so you will be holding up your regular things and features like comments, stories, notification and a whole bunch of other things as well. But here is the issue. If you mark your content as not made for kids and stats shows that your content is being watched quite a lot by kids whether that's a motivational video or maybe that's a programming videos. A lot of kids are learning HTML and CSS in their school and they might be below 15 or something or below 13. And then in that case, your channel will be marked as, hey, you are providing a false information. Now in that case, if there's a false information, even if you didn't meant it to be, but then things are very serious. Now, according to the agreement between FTC and YouTube, which YouTube is not making very public and is not kind of marketing it much is that this FTC is going to do some periodical auditing on the YouTube channel and YouTube has said to the FTC that hey just do a periodical audit and all those content creators who are not following your rules and laws just sue them directly. So per violation means per video you have to pay a fine of $42,000 if you're living in America. If you're living in outside and they cannot sue you directly then your channel will get terminated permanently probably for a lifetime just because your content was being watched by some kids and you are just a person sitting in a room making some motivational videos and those videos might be watched by kids. So what to do? Mark all of my channel's content as made for kids and then lose all the features or just mark all of the content as not for kids and then probably in the audit I get into the trap and then FTC decide to say that hey this was meant for kids, it was directed for the kids. 
So it's not just about our kids appearing in your videos or not. It's also about what is the intention of that video and how to find the intention of a video, whether kids were there or not. For example, the channels like create or what's inside in that that dad and kid are having fun in opening up the things. Now surely I do agree there are some channels which are churning out their kids and just trying to make money from their kids. I do appreciate people like Casey Neistat who always blur out the face of any kids that might accidentally appear in their video. But there are a lot of other people as well who love to post their videos about their kids and just trying to make money out of them. That's sad but there are all kind of people. So what, what could be the solution of this? Now I do agree here, I'm not a lawyer and I'm also not a person who is specialized in making these laws and terms and conditions but definitely YouTube can do a little bit better than this than just openly submitting to the FTC that hey, do an open witch hunt for our creator and do whatever you like, sue them, delete them from our platform, do whatever you like. January 1st, 2020 can be a really dreadful date for a lot of you. And I believe a lot of content creator will be, will be migrating to a lot of other platforms. Maybe TikTok, maybe Chinese YouTube, maybe any other platform like this. But things are very serious. And that is, my dear friend, about the COPA. Now you understand the gravity of the situation. And now you understand what's going to be the impact of this COPA Act in the near future on the YouTube. I don't know how FTC is going to determine my channel. Is HTML for kids and AWS and Docker is not? How are you going to determine that?